I trust his heart and I can praise him no matter how the situation looks. Amen. Uh, I do want to tell you about this. A visitor uh, to the town approached uh, uh, D.C. one day and said, what's the quickest way to the next to Chocolate And D.C. scratched his head and said, are you walking or driving? And the guy said, I'm driving. D.C. looked at him and said, well, that's the quickest way. <laughs> Okay, a, a couple of goobers <laughs> were out in the woods hunting and one of them falls to the ground. These are our oldest begonies. He doesn't seem to be breathing and his eyes roll back in his head and the other guy whips out a cell phone and calls 911. Panic stricken, he says to the operator, I think Cletus is dead, what should I do? The operator in a calm, soothing voice says, just take it easy, I can help. First, let's make sure he's dead. Then there's a silence, then a shot rings out, the guru comes back and the line says, okay, now what? <laughs> they go in there quick, I'm going to leave them alone. I thought if the first one weren't going enough, I'd get you with the second one. All right. Plug it in to God's power. Plug it in. If there's one thing we need in this last day and time, is plugging into God's power. Stuff we watch the news, and, and I'm not kidding, you know this is the truth. Every time I turn on the news, uh, I have Fox News in my car, or CNN, all of them I have in my car. And when I turn on the news every day when I think it can't get any worse or can't get any crazier, it gets crazier. And I, I'm thinking, you know, again, you don't say to them how crazy can this get because they think it is a challenge because it keeps getting crazier and crazier and crazier. And, and, and I keep hearing Congress say one thing and then they turn around and, and the people that actually did the bean counter say this isn't right and they're saying this is not going to happen. And then somebody else says, we read these bills and this is going to happen and blah, blah, blah. And I don't even know what to think anymore. I don't know what to even do. And I think the guys in Washington are so out of touch with people down here that they don't even know what's going on. And so, so I see this stuff happening. And I see the world events. And I see Russia. Uh, what Russia is trying to do in China. What China is doing. But the Bible tells us that all this is going to take place. Uh, uh, and make, there's going to be a collision. Note this. There's going to be a collision. Uh, but the collision is going to be either just before the rapture or just after the rapture. It's going to be a major, major collision. And it's going to be an attack on Israel. And when they attack Israel, it's going to be a game over. Game over for at least a few years anyway. Okay? And so, so I saw this stuff going in. And I know that in order for us to be able to handle what is happening around us, we have to plug in to God's power. We've got to plug into him. And, and, and I, I know there's times uh, uh, when you're feeling bad or when you're hurting or when you when you, when, when, when things you've just been through a very terrible time. You went through a death of a loved one. You went through that big fall like DC had or, or you go to the emergency room and there's other things happening. A lot of times you begin to wonder where God is or where was God at. And, and at, at the moment, sometimes it's hard to feel his pressure or feel his uh, presence and his power all you feel is the pressure so so what do you do when all you feel is the pressure of what's going on around you what do you do when there's a whole lot of questions but there's no answers what, what do you do when life is con constantly continually throwing curveballs well, what do you do well, how do I know that God's here and how do I plug into the power of God? The answer is very simple. It's almost elementary. And you'll say, well, this is just too simple. That's the problem. We live in this age where, where things are so complicated. When you get a simple answer, sometimes uh, the people give you a simple answer because they don't want to answer your question. But this is as simple as simple can be. And that is when you don't feel like it, when you don't understand when there's more questions than there is answers, you have to learn to praise God anyway. If you can learn to praise God in your problems, it's amazing. That now, if you happen to see, uh, uh, during this sermon, if you happen to see a, a pop-up that says praise there, you know what it means? Praise there means I want you to clap your hands and I want you to praise the Lord. I mean, really give, give it a good shot. Matter of fact, we're going to try it right now. Look, we're going to pray.
praise God one time. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a chance to praise Him. You can praise Him by clapping your hands, by, 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 by shouting, by, by whatever. But whenever you see praise there, pop up on that screen without me having to tell you, I want you to turn loose. It will be okay. I promise it won't scare me. I promise. Ready? Let's try it one time. We're going to praise God. Ready? Come on. Think of what He's done for you this week. Glory. But praise reminds us 
that, that think about what he's already done for us in our life and know that he can do it again. Now we're starting. Starting fresh. Are you ready? But Sierra was graduating, and we were out there, that, we were out there in the ball field, and we were on these bleachers. And when Sierra graduated, I went, mean, <laughs> and the guy sat beside me and said, how much would you charge me to do that for my granddaughter? <laughs> and I said, just tell me when she comes up, and when she comes up, I, did, I, did, I whistled for you too. <laughs> Amen. All right, so, so, so here we go. Thank God good. All the time. You can't make, listen. You can't move, you can't make God move in your life, but you can't make room for God to move in your life. Wow. Wow. Praise makes room for God's blessings in our life. You know what? God's not going to hold back. He's not going to hold back for you. Of course, we have life, and there's things we go through. Every last one of us, there's things we have to go through. And if you go back and look in the Bible, and look at all the heroes of God, every last one of them, God showed everything. He showed their blemishes. He showed their doubts. He showed their pouts. He showed their bouts when they had to fight the enemy, and when things were coming against him. He wanted us to see everything, so we would know that life isn't perfect. But God is. Life isn't perfect, but God is. And that's why we praise Him in the middle of all this. So He's not going to hold back His goodness. Praise opens a gateway of blessings as we come into the presence of God. The Bible says, uh, enter His gates of thanksgiving, His course of praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. Psalm 104. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians. Oh, there it goes again. Go ahead. There you go. Come on. That is such an awesome. Praise invites His presence. He dwells. The Bible tells us that He'll hear me. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Praise invites His presence. God dwells close to us when we praise Him. Did you know that? I've heard people say, I just don't feel God. I don't feel Him. I don't know where He's at. I haven't heard from Him in a long, long time. But guess what? He inhabits the praises of His people. So whether you feel Him or not, every time a praise comes out of your mouth, He's there. You know, it's like, it's like the, the, the lilies of the field talking about how God clothed them and how a sparrow does not hit the ground without him knowing it. So you know God has attended every sparrow in this world throughout time. God has attended every sparrow at his funeral. <coughs> if God's got that kind of watchful eye, don't you know he hears for a praise? You know, uh, we were watching uh, the $100,000 pyramid last night. I hadn't seen it in years. And I watched it, and it was so amazing because they were gift clues, and they would say things, and once that one word was said, you hear, ding! And every time, blah, 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 say that word, ding! Well, guess what? When you're going through things in your life, God's listening. And when God hears, praise Him. Praise Him. God goes, ding! And something special happens. His presence is there. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 and 9. Well, there it goes again. Come on. Don't get tired of it. Don't get tired of it. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's right. Amen. Wouldn't it be something that the rapture took place while we were doing that? Wouldn't it be awesome? Yeah. All right. Revival 16. Our spirits are refreshed. Our spirits are renewed when we get His presence. Well, they're strengthened by Him. His peace dwells in us, and we are refueled by His joy. Think about it. We're refueled by His 
joy. You know, I was talking with somebody just the other day and, and talking about the peace of God in the situation. Oh, it was, it was, it was, I think it was B5, I'm not sure. But I was talking to people that were going through some things and, and I said, do you want peace? And I read the scripture. I'm going to give you peace not like the world gives you. I'm going to leave you my peace and the world can't take it away. And this is what that mean. I said, peace on the outside means absence of conflict. I said, have you ever had a time in your life when you had total absence of conflict? I can answer that. No. There's always something going on. There's always something on the job. There's something in your life. There's something in the family. There's something going on in your mind. Your children, whatever. There's never a time. I can't remember ever a time that there was an absence of conflict on the outside in my life. But you know what his peace is? His peace does not mean an absence of conflict. His peace is your reign, which means to bind together that which has been separated, which is what the cross does. It binds together that which has been separated. And so his peace means I, my relationship with God is going to shine through me and in me and bring that kind of peace no matter what happens on the outside. That way I can look at somebody and I have them many a time to walk down the hall of the funeral home with them or walk down the hall of the hospital or hospice or, or, or in the, wherever uh, and I can still feel God's presence although the peace around me was shattered the peace within me was intact and it wasn't going anywhere. So our spirits were refreshed. They were renewed <coughs> by His presence. Through a heart of praise, we realize that God doesn't change our situations and work little. He doesn't just change our situations, but He works through our problems and He changes our hearts. Wow. You see, in His presence, there's fullness of joy. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hand. Psalm 63, 3 and 4. Look, there's another one. Come on. Off of all four knuckles, they were bleeding. 
So I pulled, I reached back behind me, and I pulled back, and I caught that, and I turned around, and I was getting ready to tell him what I thought. I was getting ready to holler, and all this happened so fast, and I heard this still small voice say, praise me. This is all going on in a split second. Praise me. Man. I said, I really don't feel like that right now, Lord. I like to give him peace in my mind. This is all going on in a split second. He said, praise me. Praise me. Praise me. So, I looked at my hand. The blood was coming off my fingers. And I said, glory! And the guy beside me said, have you lost your mind? I said, no. I said, but I'd rather do this than what I was going to say. <laughs> and later on, I found out, I didn't say just praise God for me. There were some other guys on the other side. And when they saw me in that condition with all my knuckles busted open and the blood coming out of my fingers, and they heard me go, glory, praise him. They said, you just made one of the biggest differences in our life. I wasn't even thinking they were over there close to me. I didn't even know they were around me. So because I praised God, I didn't do it for me. I did it for them too because it, watch this, it paves the way. It affects people all around you. <clears throat> when you start praising, God will shake things up. Paul and Silas, <coughs> they said they in the prison. They were shackled. Let me just kind of explain something here about Paul and Silas. Some of y'all have heard this. Some of y'all haven't. I did a set of homecoming one time. It didn't turn out too good. Paul and Silas, because they were so scared of them, they took Paul and Silas and they put them in the very bottom of this prison. The prison had multiple stories underground. Everybody ever worked in a sump pump underground? I have. I've been in multiple stories, sump pumps underground. It's cold, it's dark, it's damp. That's just those sumps. Now, or the sons, now, now. Paul and Silas were about four down, about as far as you can go. They, weren't, they didn't have any OSHA laws. There weren't any lights down there for them. So, it was dark where they were at, except for maybe a torch. This up. Because people would die down there in shackles. There was body parts in flesh, brought his flesh around them. Not a lot of flesh around them. There was maggots. Their hands and their feet were in stocks. Gang Green usually would start sitting in soon after being in those things. And human fluids of all types would fall down on top of them. Their backs were beat to a pulp. They're stripped. They're beaten. And their feet and their hands are in stocks. They can smell the stench of death. They can see the maggots. They, they feel all the stuff around them. Now, <coughs> in that condition, <coughs> the guys are used to hearing people cry down there and cuss down there and, and, and blaspheme God and everybody. But the Bible said at midnight, at the very first, very most possible worst time, at midnight, they began to sing praises and sing hymns unto God. And the Bible says the prisoners heard them. That word heard means literally to hear with anticipation. They've never heard this before. They're not used to hearing this. And so when they hear this, <clears throat> they're waiting to see what God's going to do. And God responded. Because God busted through. Amen? So, so <clears throat> At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. God moved heaven and earth. God sent the earthquake. The power moved the hearts of the jailer and all his family were saved. It's amazing what can happen when you start praising. There it goes again. Come on! I love it. This is so awesome. All right. God desires to show his power 
through your storm. Amen? That's, that's awesome. You see, the impatience for God's power to be displayed for miracles to take place, you have a choice every day of your life. You have a choice whatever you go through. You have a choice. Are you going to be absorbed by your worry? Are you going to be absorbed by your stress? Or, you know, and, and focused only on what surrounds you? Or are you going to talk to God and praise Him and let God do His thing? We can ask God to help us take our eyes off of the problems of mess and the voices of others and look up and say, God, here I am. God, here I am. Like that day. Like that day. When I got my hand caught in that toolbox, there was a bunch of guys in the shop. I didn't know the first time I knew about it. The time was the guy beside me. And I felt like taking a ball bean hammer and popping him right in the mouth. Well, look at my fingers like they were. But God said, praise him. And I thanked to all the guys in that room because I praised God. And they knew what had happened. They heard it. They saw it. They saw the blood. And they were amazed that I praised God. Uh, another funny story was uh, I was, we were doing a, a shutdown. And we had a couple of underground uh, sump tanks, and, and they were cleaning them out. And there was two older ladies, and they were on, I think, the middle sump tank. And I was climbing down to them. And when I got close to them, before I started climbing down in that little bitty hatch, before I started climbing down, I heard them. They were cussing. And they were carrying on about how sorry the job was and how they got stuck out here doing this. They were just cussing and carrying on, cussing, cussing, cussing. And they started cussing about other people in there. And I started climbing. I was in charge of the shutdown. And I started climbing down that ladder. And I started climbing down that ladder. They got a little quieter. I mean, I saw it to my feet. They went from cussing to, watch this. They started to up singing, amazing grace. I said, it's so nice to hear somebody doing something besides cussing and carrying on. They were just doing it, but it's on my feet and changed them. Look, look. Change people by changing yourself. Ready? Here we go. God desires our whole heart. See, he wants to know, he wants us to know the power of his presence. He wants us to know him in a very powerful way. And so, when the Spirit's calling, you got to let it rip. Amen? Now the PA is going to do it. All right. Okay. Here's the base hand. All right. When you enter God's presence with praise, He enters your circumstances with power. Think about this. When you enter his presence with praise, he enters your circumstances with power. The early church didn't focus on the crucifixion. Their focus was on the resurrection. And we're going to say this together. This, and I can, I can make a copy of this that you get ready to read. Together, if you want to, or you can just keep it in your mind. And I want you to say this every day. Get ready. All, all over the psalm says, Dear Lord, hear my cry. Hear my cry. Hear my cry. Give me a cry. Ready? I'll say it with me. Read it loud with me. We praise you today with our heart and songs. We praise you for your faithfulness. We praise you for your great power and love. We confess our need for you. Our lives don't go so well when we just spin around on our own. We struggle and worry and get weary and worn. You never leave us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your care over us. Thank you that your breath, you breathe renewal right into our souls. We ask for your spirit to fill us, to draw us close to yourself, and to work your purposes through us. We set our eyes on you. Glory. Glory. God's got this. God's got this. Here it goes. Watch this. Here's how you, here's how you need to praise God. When you feel like it, and when you don't. When you feel like it, and when you don't. But when you do, you make room for him to move. Oh, there it is. Come on. Yes, God. Yeah. God is awesome. God is awesome.
awesome. God is awesome. <coughs> Brandon, come up here and play something softly, please. You can't make God move in your circumstances, but you can make room for God to move in your circumstances through praise. Everybody stand. God is alive. God is well. God is working in our lives. Every head bowed, every eye closed. First, let me ask if you're here today, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today, and you're not as close to God as you used to be, but you really, really, really desire it. And if I looked around, would you put up that hand and say, I really want to draw closer. I really want to draw closer. Bless the Lord, bless him, bless him. Maybe you're here today and get honest. Maybe a while since you felt God move. I remember when Beverly was pregnant with DC and Beverly was pregnant with Daniel. And they were they were they were kickers. I mean they were kickers. And DC, bless his heart, his foot was great old big in, you know. And I feel that kick, and every time I feel that kick, I get excited. When I didn't feel that kick for a while, it always got me nervous. Because I wondered what was going on. I don't feel his kick. Is he there? Is everything going okay? Then that kick will come again. Everything will be fine. Some of us, it's been a while since we felt God kick. And we're ready to feel him kick again. We're ready to feel his presence. To know he's there. To know everything's all right. Every hip bow. Every eye closed. It's been a while since you felt that kick. It's been a while since you felt his presence. And you're ready to feel it one more time. We just put that hand up. I'm ready. Bless the Lord. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Do you know today, every time you praise God, whether I told, told you to praise there or not, every time you praised Him, He drew closer to you. If you can learn to praise Him during the day, during your darkest hours, during your toughest moments, You will feel him. And even if you can't feel him, you will know that he's there because he gave the promise. When you praise him, he's going to be there. Everybody repeat out to me. Father, Father, I love you. I, love you. I praise your name. I rededicate my life to you. And I thank you for what you're doing. Help me to be able to make praise my first response instead of my last. Help me to know that praise not only affects you, it affects me and it affects everybody around me. Help me, God, to remember the power of praise. And I thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. God is awesome. God is awesome. God is awesome. It's amazing what can happen when you learn to praise. I remember working at Pitt uh, Hospital from 8 at night to 8 in the morning. And they would call me in all the time. And I wouldn't call. I was there. And they would call me and I would go to a room, any place in the hospital, I'd go to the emergency room, I'd go to any floor, or wherever they call me, they would leave the pastor, or they were the code blue. And every time I went there, all the way down that hall, two things I would do is I'd say, God, I can't do this without you. I gotta have your hand, because I don't know what these people, I don't know who they are, I don't know what they're experiencing. They
They didn't even tell me what it was. They said for code blue or whatever. They didn't tell me it was an old person, young person, whatever. And so I said, Holy Spirit, we're walking down the hall. I said, Holy Spirit, you know what I'm getting ready to step into. So I thank you for leading me and guiding me. And I thank you for your presence. And then I'm going to praise him all the way to that room. And when I got in the room, most of the time, I had about 10 to 15 seconds. That's it. To scope out the room and try to figure out where I started. And I didn't worry because I had praised my way all the way there. And I knew that God was with me. And He never, ever, I'm going to say that again, He never, ever let me down. Not one time. Now, One day I was a chaplain in Dunn, and as my I was on as my shift, <clears throat> and there was somebody dying on all four floors. And I was going back and forth, and the person down below, they they wanted the priest. So I got the priest for them. And they were traveling through it was the emergency room, they wanted the priest. I said, sure. And I went down. And I talked with the priests after he gave them their, it's not called last rites anymore, the divine anointment. Ointment, I gave you the divine anointing. He gave you the divine anointing. He looked at me and he said, when she dies, don't call me. I said, but they need support. He said, well, then you do it. I was blown away. I spent about four or five hours there going back and forth and they all died. But that woman, they moved her up on the floor and when she died, they already told me they wanted the Catholic. They didn't want Protestant, they wanted Catholic. But when she died, I, I, I praised my way all the way up and said, God, you have to tell me what I'm what to do. And when I got in that room, I stayed with them for well over an hour. And they thanked me because they said they felt the presence of God, the power of God, the comfort of God. And again, God showed up and God showed up. Praise Him. Praise Him. Tomorrow on your job, you got something new you got to do. Praise Him. You're, you're in the middle of something that's driving you crazy. Praise Him. Your kids are driving you crazy. Driving you crazy. Praise Him. Your spouse is driving you crazy before you whoop Him. Praise Him. <laughs> Amen. God's got this. Amen. He won't let you down. I promise He won't let you down. By the way, I'm just missing some prayer, please. Pray. Father God, it's a pleasure and honor to be able to go out from today. Thank you for the blessing of life. Thank you for the mercy of grace. Go out from the Father. Thank you for the chance to